All right. So um, a lot of the problems in uh, chapter 12 uh, deal with like the, the economic value added. So I, I'm doing problem four, um, but I'm going to upload the spreadsheet and then you can, um, you know, apply this for, um, you know, two or eight. Um, but the it, it's based on the same thing. So we have um, these cash flows. Uh, we're going to pay initially a uh, hundred, whatever. Um, and then in year uh, one, um, we start our production, right? But it takes a full year. So year two, we begin to actually um, see the output, right? And then once we get everything up and running through years three through 10, uh, we're at this full capacity, right? If you see, we would kind of ramp up and then we're at full. So uh, we don't have production costs until we're producing um, and you see here the the net revenue is just how much our production is times whatever that unit cost is. The, the spread isn't changing in this one. Um, and they give us a rate of return uh, of 9%. And the net present value at that is equal to zero, right? And that's going to be important later when we're calculating this, right? And then um, calculate year by year book and economic profitability. Uh, assume a straight line depreciation over 10 years and the cost of capital is nine, right? And so uh, this yellow, green, blue, on the next one, I'm going to show sort of the, the sheet, um, right? So this is, you know, what I put up when I was saying, like, this is the uh, the numbers. I think there was some confusion. Like, wait, where did some of those numbers come from? So let me just kind of walk through this. So initially, we're going to pay 100 a uh, million or whatever it is, a hundred units. Um, and it, we're going to write that off at a straight line depreciation over 10 years, meaning every year for 10 years, you know, is that divided by 10, right? You see up here, the formula, uh, by the way, um, if you, if you look, uh, control is in the lower left-hand corner of your keyboard up in the upper left below the escape key, there's like a little, uh, apostrophe. And then above that's a tilde. If you hit control and that button at the same time, it'll switch um, to the the formulas, right? So you can you can toggle back and forth um, to, to look at those, right? Uh, but we were told it's a nine percent rate of return, right? And that was given to us. This ten percent uh, depreciation is a hundred divided by ten, so it's just ten a year, which means this one hundred is going down by ten each year, right? So each one of those is going down by ten, right? Um, and then, uh, revenue, right. That was given to us in the problem, right over here. I just pulled it from that problem, right. Um, the production costs, the transportation and other costs were all given in that problem. And so the book income here, right. It's just saying, okay, what's our revenue, right. Minus depreciation. And then all of our expenses, right. And in this case, um, we paid $31 for all of our expenses, you know, getting this thing up and running. Uh, and then there's a 10, um, million, whatever paper loss. Um, but it wasn't cash, right? And that's why cash flow here just has those costs where the book income also includes that depreciation, right? Um, and so this goes for, for all of these, right? It, it goes the same way. That's where all of these numbers come from. So negative 41, negative 2794 and then it flat lines out at 1446 the book rate of return is basically what's the return on uh on these assets right and so um you see these rates go up and up and up um even though it starts negative right it's going up right and it just keeps going up and that's because we're writing down that book value right as we go through this okay uh, and then what is our cash flow? We paid out a hundred there, and then we're not paying this. We paid it actually all up front. This is just our how we're depreciating it, right? And so we're depreciating um, that out. And so if you notice, the cash flow is ten dollars higher in each of those years uh, because that all happened at once, right? Um, and then right here, this this is the part that I think some people were getting a little um, confused about because it's a couple of changes to it. So the present value we know is going to be zero at the very beginning of the project, because when we calculated this, it was 
created to have a net present value of zero, right? Uh, it was it was in the pro the problem, right? NPV is zero, right? Uh, so we know that, and we also know at the very end of the project it's zero. So those those are kind of given to us, right? And then all of these other values, it's just, well, what's the present value of these future cash flows? So that at the very beginning, the only thing that's in the future uh, is this cash flow, right? And so the present value of that is just a couple of cents less, right? And if you go to the next one, right, now it's like, okay, well, I got a couple of years worth, and now it's worth this much, right? And then three years, four, five, six, seven, eight years, right? And it's all fine, right? But now we have this issue where the cash flow changes. Not a big deal, right? Because I already know all of these is equal to this. So in this one, all I got to say is, okay, well, I know I'm going to get this and I know I'm going to pay this. So just add those together and then discount that back, right? And so I get that, right? And then the same thing, this accounts for all of these cash flows. So in this one, right, I just add those two together and discount it back, right? And again, I'm going to end up with zero. And so I have a beginning of the year, end of the year, present value for every year. Okay. And then I can just subtract those off and I would get the change in present value. Right. And then economic depreciation is just going to be the uh, the inverse of that. Take the uh, negative um, of it. Uh, and then we have uh, a cash flow right, that we were going to, uh, you know, book in, right? Like, hey, we've gotten this cash flow, but then what should we have gotten, right, economically, right? Um, and so that's that's what this is. This change in, in present value, that's that's the, the change in the value of these cash flows, right? So what I want to do is say, okay, well, if I were to say $100, I should have paid 100 economically uh or according to what i actually um you know did, did or whatever um i paid uh 70 41 right and in this one i was expecting to pay 31 and i actually paid um uh, 36 34 or or actually decreased in value by 36 34 right um, and so with all of these, what you're looking at is I'm just taking the cash flow, you know, it's this line right here, right? And then subtracting that line right there, 10 minus 14, right? And that just goes across for each one of these. Right. And so um, the the issue that comes up with EVA is it's really hard for us to sometimes put a value on long-term assets, right? Uh, book value, you end up getting everything written off. You start getting these wonky numbers, right? I remember, um, like I worked at International Paper and we would have machines that, I mean, they've been fully depreciated for decades, you know, and we're still using them, you know? Um, and so you can get some really weird uh, cost accounting numbers that come out of it. Uh, and that's what this EVA is trying to show. Uh, the problem is um, EVA can be way overstated uh, if what you're doing is like a one-off thing, right? Because it sort of presumes this continuous life, um, you know, because our, our time value money stuff is sort of builds in these long-term equations. Um, and so something that's very short-term, like a movie, it can show this outsized value, right? Um, but yeah, hopefully that, that shows all that again. Um, if you hit that control tilde, right, then it, it shows, um, what those equations themselves look like. Um, but yeah, I will save this, uh, also with the video on, um, uh, on, on Blackboard for you guys.